How to install and configure RetroPie on Raspberry Pi 4. At the time of this video, RetroPie isn't available on the Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm not so sure it will be. This setup with the Raspberry Pi 4 makes it a little bit easier to add and delete games because of a graphical user interface. For my purposes, I'm using a Raspberry Pi to either run an arcade machine or a control panel that plays arcade games, so there are slight configuration differences. I wanted to start off by giving credit where credit is due. I've been using ETA Prime's videos to get started. There are slight differences in my configuration, and so I figured I'd make a video to clear that up. I also have a separate video discussing how to add and delete ROMs on the Raspberry Pi 3 using RetroPie. There are slight differences with the Raspberry Pi 4, which I'll get into also. As usual, I'll have timestamps, links, and the commands in the comments below. To start off with, you'll want to go to raspberrypi.org and download Raspbian Buster with desktop. There's a link in the description that discusses how to download and mount this, so I won't get into those steps on this video. If you have any questions, there's many YouTube videos on this subject. So let's get started with this tutorial. Right now I have Raspbian Buster with desktop mounted on an SD card and installed in my Raspberry Pi. So this is my first boot of Raspbian on this device. And here I am following the prompts to set a country. It's pretty self-explanatory to follow through the prompts. I leave the username as its default of Pi and the password as Raspberry and continue on. Now it's connecting to my Wi-Fi network, which is important because I need the internet to do the following steps. So either connect to your Wi-Fi or connect an Ethernet cable to your Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to go ahead and let it update the software. This process took 15 or 20 minutes depending on your Ethernet connection. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to where it's installed. No use in watching a taskbar go up. You can see I changed my background here. So I go ahead and restart like it asks. Now what you'll need to do is open a terminal window by clicking that black box up in the upper left hand corner and typing the following command into download RetroPie. So I go ahead and do that. And then I change directory into the RetroPie setup folder with this command. So now you need to go into the RetroPiePackages.sh file and add the following line, double underscore platform equals RPI3. I've had trouble in the past with doing double underscores, so I think it's best to copy and paste this command from the description. Then you hit Control X to exit the file, and then select Y to save it. So far, these steps are the same as ETA Prime's tutorial I mentioned earlier, and this is where we're going to start to deviate. The first time I tried to install RetroPie, I received an error saying unable to install SDL or something to that effect. It took me a little while to get through that. So what I'm going to do here is put the following command in sudo.retropie underscore packages dot sh sdl2 to download that. I think this part took about five minutes. So I'll go ahead and skip ahead. Once that's complete, I'm going to install the X screensaver. This is needed to turn the screensaver off. Apparently in Raspbian it's really difficult to get the screensaver to not show up. And so if you download this X screensaver, you can go ahead and get it to turn off pretty easily. The last thing you want is a screen to be turning off while you're playing your video games, which is also something that happened to me the first time. So now my X screensaver is installed. I'll need to reboot the computer in order to have that change take effect. And so now the next command is to go into the RetroPie setup script by typing in the following command. So I always get this, you have an experimental desktop driver error message, and I, I kind of ignore it. It doesn't seem to cause me any problems. I don't really know what it means. I looked it up on the internet a few times to try to understand if that's going to hurt me somehow, but everything seems to work right, so I just leave it alone. So I'll go ahead and select OK to get rid of this error message. And now I'm going to go to the basic install and select yes to this message. And this is going to go through another 20 minute process or so. It's kind of like watching a pot of water boil. So this is what it looks like when it completes the process. So I push over on my keyboard. 
And now's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. I type in emulation station into the terminal window. And it boots up. Now this process is very similar to my previous video where you want to configure your controller and I typically use select as a hotkey. Now let's exit out of here and go ahead and install some ROMs. I have a previous video where I discuss how to transfer ROMs on the RetroPie with the Raspberry Pi 3. On the Raspberry Pi 4 it's slightly different because we're using a graphical user interface here and it's actually a lot easier. What I'll do is I'll plug in a USB hard drive with my ROMs on it. And then I'll click on the folder icon in the upper left hand corner and navigate to Home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, and since these are arcade ROMs, I'm going to put them in the arcade folder. So I just transferred a few of them here just for demonstration purposes. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to reboot the system so I can go ahead and turn off the screensaver. We need to reboot because we installed X screensaver in a step before and it doesn't show up until you reboot. So after the reboot, to get to the X screensaver, you click on the Raspberry in the upper left hand corner, go to Preferences, and then select Screensaver. To turn it off, you go to that little box that says Mode, select that drop down, and then select Disable Screensaver. So one very important thing I didn't cover in this video is how to boot directly into a ROM or how to boot directly into RetroPie. I have a couple of methods for that, and I'm going to make another video on how to do that. So stay tuned. That's all for now, humanoid. Subscribe to this channel or you will be fired. No!